Hi there listeners, how are you today? Jaffa Man Eddie here, the Commander-in-Chief of Creative Copywriting Content Solutions on the Gold Coast. Today I just wanted to share with you um, a few tips to help you convert your quotes into sales faster. Um, Now this is more targeted towards if you're a service business, um, you know, and if you're a copywriting service or a content writing service, a website designer or something similar along those, it's perfect for you guys. So, you know, the first tip I'd have to give you is have a template. Now, I know that sounds bleeding obvious, but a lot of people overlook the obvious. So always have a quote or proposal template, okay? Um, it saves you having to, you know, go back and forward and redo it each and every time. Um, the second tip I'd give you is one thing that we do is we include our prospects logo on on their costings, yeah? Um, Customers love seeing their logo alongside yours and on their quote. And it's one of those little things that make a big difference um, in business as far as I'm concerned. It also shows that you've gone to their website, um, scoped them out, had a look, learned a little bit about them, and that's important in this day and age. Tip number three would be credibility. Now, One thing I started using, I've been using these tips for probably 12 years or so now, um, because I used to have single page proposals, but they're about as useful as an ashtray on a motorbike. So these days, I make sure my quotes or proposals have at least one testimonial on it. Now, this adds credibility and social proof, yeah? And these days, social proof is everything, yeah? Um, Recent projects would be another tip, you know? Um, If you're writing um, or doing a proposal to do some website copywriting, try and include a few previous projects on your quote with links as to who you wrote the copy for. Um, You know, it's what we call, as you know, putting your prospect in the picture so they can see, you know, um, some of the website copy you've wrote for an example. Uh, The next tip I could give you is standard versus deluxe pricing. Now, We all know different customers have different needs, different wants, different budgets and different outcomes, yeah? So what I tend to do is include a standard and a deluxe pricing. Now the standard might not, might be something as simple as uh, the client wants to proofread the copy themselves, yeah? Um, Some clients will tell you that or I'll ask them that at the first um, call when they first contact us, but some aren't sure, some want a price on both. So a standard pricing would be, you know, DIY proofreading. Uh, A lot of clients that we have um, proofread the copy themselves solely because they either like to do it themselves, they have staff to do it, um, or they want to save money. And then we have the deluxe pricing, which includes professional proofreading. Um, You know, um, basically, and, that, and that's it. I mean, so the thing about standard and deluxe pricing that you need to be aware of is don't make your deluxe offer more than 50% of the standard offer. Now, to put that into a, 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 a mindset or an example for you, if you have a standard offer of $1,100, for example, and your deluxe pricing is $3,100, well, not many people are going to take your deluxe offer because it's a $2,000 price difference between the standard and the deluxe. You really only want to make your deluxe offer 50% more in cost than what your standard is. But you know, you can apply that to information products um, and a whole lot of other stuff, not only services that you're providing. Another tip I could give you is a guarantee. Now, you know, don't run away from your guarantee. Um, I don't know anything about your products or services. Um, Since we started in 2003, we've always had a love your sales copy guarantee. And over the 15 years we've been in business, only three people, I've only refunded it to three people because they were just the wrong type of people for us. And um, so it wasn't really they weren't dissatisfied. We just were on a different page, you might say. So don't be afraid of featuring your guarantee on your quotes and proposals, if you have one. And of course, it doesn't have to be a money back guarantee. It might be, you know, uh, we deliver it, um, you know, within 24 hours if it's a product or you'll notice a lot of mattress companies these days talk about, oh, we'll give you a 30 day sleep easy guarantee. Um, You know, so it does not have to be a money back guarantee. It could be that we guarantee it on time every time and so forth. So, Another tip would be to have an inclusion section. 
you know, so state the services um, that people are getting for their money in your quotes or proposals, yeah? Like what's included with that? Um, just drawing once again on my own experience, you know, is professional proofreading included in that? Yes or no? You'd include that in the inclusion section if it was. Um, is uploading a, a blog to the client's website included in that? If it is, you'd include that in the blog. Next tip would be have an exclusion section. You know, it's easy when, when we're dealing with people for um, messages and content to get lost. Um, that's why I always have an exclusion section as well. You know, so it might say excludes, you know, uploading blog content and laying it out on your website. That would be an exclusion. Another tip could be turnaround time. Now, once again, I do not know what your products or services are. Uh, if you're a service-based business, you know, giving your prospect or the person who's asked for a quote an estimated turnaround time to get their project is gold because this helps them plan, um, you know, and they're, keep in mind, guys, they're, they're time poor and busy too. I mean, if your customers are anything like ours, you know, they have their own business. So, you know, they need to plan and, and this and work, coordinate with a website designer or whatever if that is in, not included in your proposal. Another tip would be to include time-sensitive uh, time pricing. Now, the reason I say that is, I, you know, when I first started in 2003, I just had an A4 proposal and I'd send out the costing and, you know, do my follow-up and, and so forth. And, you know, people would come back eight months later. Now, things change a lot in eight months. You know, the cost of living, for example, has usually changed in eight months. So... I like to put a turnaround time on it, um, sorry, a time sensitive pricing, meaning that this is valid for, you know, well, whether it's seven days, 14 days or whatever uh, your turnaround or your, your time sensitive pricing is. Ultimately, you know, this will depend on the type of product or service that you provide. Another thing that I've um, implemented on our um, proposals for over 10 years is to include the payment details on your costings, yeah, or proposals. Um, you know, this makes it easy for the person to pay when they want, you know. It also eliminates, you know, the emailing back and forth, the missed play and phone tag and so forth, because, you know, it's really hard to reach people these days. And that probably falls into, you know, the tip I just gave you before, that subject to what your customers business is, you know, they're time poor running their own business as well. So we need to make it easy for them. And I found by including the payment terms on my quotes, you know, 80% of our clients just use that, pay it, I've received the money, and then we just issue them their tax invoice. Another quick tip would be to sort of bullet point how their project comes to life. Now, even if you spoke with them over the phone, you know, always include a section on how their project comes to life. So that would, you know, be payment terms. That would be the proofreading scenario, if you so desire. And ultimately, you know, this is more aimed towards first-time clients. A lot of our work comes from referral and repeat business. So what I'm saying is how you um, work with a repeat customer as opposed to an acquisition or a new customer is different. So these tips are really good solely for the first time customer. So it, on your quotes and proposals, include how their project comes to life. Last but not least, I'd have to say always tell them what they need to do next to, you know, pull the trigger on your costing or proposal. Now, I'm a direct response copywriter uh, by trade. Um, and, you know, having a strong call to action has always been um, bred into me, if you like. Um, you know, if you've got a special price for the next seven days, make them aware of that in your call to action or in your email when you send it to them. You know, always, always tell people what they need to do next um, to make the process simple for them and for you. Okay, last but not least was probably be the golden rule is, you know, always follow up. You know, it's really important 
um, to have a, a follow-up back-end sequence, meaning that once you've sent the proposal, you need a, a series of steps, yeah, to, um, you know, keep, to, to stay top of mind with that customer because chances are they're getting other costings from your competitors as well um, and so forth. So always have a follow-up system, guys. All right, well, that's it from me. I hope you got something out of this. And more importantly, I hope you got something that you can action on your, on your quotes um, to um, convert more quotes and proposals into sales faster. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me uh, or visit our website at www.creativecopywriting.com.au. Um, feel free to uh, reach out, as I said. Have a great day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye now.